The third one is actually the third question you ask when you get people stand up is, so you've had wisdom teeth pulled, which is, I would say, probably the least known. People know about mercury now. They somewhat know about root canals because of, you know, documentaries like Root Cause and others and, you know, more talk about it. But wisdom teeth pulled still seem to be, what's the problem with that? What would you say? What's the problem with having your wisdom teeth pulled? Yeah, why do I ask the question, have they had your wisdom teeth pulled? Because that's actually normal in the Western world. I would say at least 80% of all teenagers get them pulled because we grow too narrow and have no space for our wisdom teeth anymore. The problem is the surgeon will only inform you about the surgery and the pain meds and how to treat with swelling and everything. But you will never be prepared for that surgery, meaning you as a teenager going into a surgery unprepared, usually lack of nutrients, critical lack of vitamins like vitamin D3 and critical minerals like magnesium, zinc, boron. You basically in a hibernation mode when going into surgery. So what happens is we are trained as oral surgeons to really be fast because only then insurance pays for it. So for wisdom teeth, general anesthesia maybe, super fast, in, eight, in teenage years, leaves a huge trauma. You're not prepared for the trauma. So basically the host is the problem. You're in hibernation mode, you're in shock, you're in, fight, you're in stress mode, your body won't heal. It's just not able to heal. That's why a lot of pa patients develop dry sockets. Mm. It's just a nasty part of like ongoing antibiotics and it just really doesn't heal. And over time, the gum heals on top of it, but the bone never really fully recovers and turns into something called ischemic bone disease, or in layman's terms, called cavitations, which better is known in, in medical world as NICO, which stands for Nico Neuralgia Inducing Cavitational Osteonecrosis, or even better, what it really is, is fatty degenerative osteonecrotic jawbone. This is something you do not learn as a dentist in university. It's part of my curriculum. If there's any dentists out there interesting, but this is why you said, why do you ask that question? Because chronic inflammation in the jawbone is the same principle. Innate immune system response, chronic cytokines, TNF-alpha, interleukin 9 beta, nf kappa B, all these things, systemically 24-7. Chronic inflammation is the trigger to all sorts of chronic diseases. And therefore, we need to know about jawbone inflammation, cavitations, removed teeth. Actually, wisdom teeth is the ones that are pulled most, but it can happen after every tooth extraction. So to those that have had their wisdom teeth pulled, wh what do you say to that if they're sitting there going, well, it already happened, Dr. Dom. What do I do now? It's all fear-mongering, Dr. Dom. <laughs> what should right. we do next? <laughs> Stop scaring the people. <laughs> I don't scare. I'm just informing. <laughs> of and course. it's actually good because the, our goal is like in the movie Root Cause. Yep. If you are already optimizing everything in your life, your lifestyle, your nutrition, your sleeping hygiene, you go outside in nature, grounding, biohacking, all the things, but you're still not superhuman, like the guy in Root Cause, which is actually your patient, right? You refer yeah, to Yeah, yeah, Fraser, good buddy. Yeah. Fraser, yeah. And it was just the root canal. Same can be for the cavitation. So first of all, again, just use it as information. Oh, wow, I had a wisdom tooth removal. Oh, my teeth look beautiful. A normal dentist doesn't know about cavitation. So maybe we're overlooking something here. And if you look at the wisdom tooth area from a Chinese medicine perspective, this is your central nervous system, your heart meridian, and your small intestine. So a lot of times it's connected to skin eczema, acne, irritable bowel syndrome, and chronic fatigue, thyroid issues, you name it. So what can you do then? It's the same as with the root canals. You apply for an appointment. And at one point, we need to make that chronic inflammation, the jawbone, acute again. So your body will heal it. Because basically, your body had no solution. Turn the volume down. Do you have no pain at the area? So pain is really a bad indicator because chronic stuff doesn't hurt. And um, we then have to do a tiny, it's a tiny surgery actually, just opening it, local in, local anesthesia and cleaning it out We're using piezo surgery. And again, the protocol is always cleaning mechanically, then using a lot of ozone because it's antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, antiparasitic, and as a miracle molecule supports your own innate healing. And then before we draw blood, spin it, make PRP membranes, put it into that cavitation and close the gum. But most importantly, and this is what I believe is the next level of biological dentistry, which I call biodentistry, is then overlapping it with functional medicine and biohacking or health optimization, meaning we prepare our patients for that surgery. Because 
because just doing that locally perfectly doesn't mean your patient is in anabolic mode. You're probably mm -hmm. not even prepared. So nutrients are key. The bone healing protocol, food design, this is all the next level and stuff that's going to be taught soon. So stay yeah. tuned. It's solution. Yeah. It, it's so true that you can't just go into any procedure and expect a great outcome without preparing for it, without getting your body ready. It's like going into a competition for something athletic and doing no prepare, not going to the gym, not ready, not being ready for yeah. it at all, and expected to get a good outcome when you like yes. race the race or something. Yeah. You go on a bodybuilding show, but you forgot to diet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the hell? You will lose. Yeah, you won't win. Exactly. That's a perfect example. Why? Are we not informing our patients about overall health optimization? Why are we just having consent about the procedure? Right. And why are we not thinking further? So what I'm teaching usually for dentists is local cleaning everything, local bone rows. This is what we always talk about in ceramic implants, in surgery. How can we grow the bone and stuff locally? But what about systemic bone growing? This is where the bone eating protocol comes in. This is where bodybuilding actually comes in and nutrition. Mm -hmm. There's great studies from other surgeries. For example, Framing, Framingham osteoporosis study showed that people that ate a little bit less, it was only about protein and healing. So it was a huge cohort study. And if they, so one gram per kilogram seems to be the ideal number for being anabolic or not anabolic. So below one gram, they had 30 days longer of hospitalization, for example. So we always recommend not just one gram, but two gram, because the literature is quite clear. We need a surplus. And therefore, you heal in warp speed because it's just science. You just have to use the knowledge we have. How does your bone grow? What about vitamin D3? What about calcium? What about osteocalcin? What about insulin? What about all these hormones? And this is obviously something that is my specialty in the world of biodentistry. And I'm needing to bring this to the table because 80% is this. The yes. surgery is great. You need this. But if you can come in clinics that do all, it's way better or work with one. Yeah. So. That's yeah. the future, I believe. Oh, yeah. Make that it, post anabolic. <laughs> yeah, it has to be the future. Otherwise, we're, we're kind of playing the losing game, you know, where we're, we're 80% we're forgetting about and focusing on the 20 that really doesn't produce <laughs> the results, which is crazy. It's just crazy talk. So, but, but, it's still, but still, you need that 20%, which is great because then you see, I'm talking about next level also for dentists. We're not right. taking something away. We're just no. finally improving the game. And that's all we should be doing is trying to be more efficient, get better outcomes with something yeah. we're already doing and then optimizing that as well. Exactly.